Let's take Apple as an example. This sure. is a company, obviously, huge disruption based yep. on what's happening in China, but stores are reopening. You've got some positive outlooks from analysts who say things are coming back online. At the same time, Apple uh, telling retail employees that they won't have parts, they won't have replacement iPhones for several weeks. Right. Let's take Apple as an example. Right. What do you see the impact being there? Yeah, so... Um we have uh, a number of analysts that are looking at this. We're looking at it uh, from a component standpoint. We're looking at it from a labor standpoint. Uh, we would say that the tightest component right now, it, the tightest ingredient in all this is the people. And that is that the people are not fully back to work. We think that the manufacturers in China are maybe 30, 35 percent of capacity, and they're, they're slowly starting to ramp back up, which is the good news. China also has been a place where many, many, many components uh, are manufactured. So from that standpoint, what we have now is that uh, we believe the tightest components will be PCBAs or printed circuit board assemblies and um, screens. And so that would fit with the story that we saw today that, you know, if you're uh, having trouble with replacement parts, what's one of the biggest parts? It's not really your memory or your processor, it's processor that fails. You drop your phone and you break the screen and, and, you, and, and, and you need a new panel. So that idea that uh, displays and screens are already starting to show up in short supply absolutely fits that story. And I think that's what we're going to see is we're going to see this is just sort of everything is generally tightening as we get deeper and deeper and deeper into this. So we've heard tech con conferences are being canceled. Yep. You guys just canceled a yeah, thousand we canceled person the, yeah. conference that was supposed to happen today. Uh, today, it was supposed to happen today down in Santa Clara. You know, there's all of this loss of productivity, employees working from home, uh, employees maybe not working at all. How do you even begin to assess the impact of that on the technology industry? Yeah, so what we're focused on is, you know, the thing, we are living in this marvelous time where we've seen that, uh, you know, GDP uh, and tech, you know, tech has been, has been, the rate of tech growth has been over 2x that of GDP. And just for perspective, back in 1999, we were shipping, you know, dog food bags and, you know, to <laughs> pets.com and all the, the sock puppet and all that. It was about 1.6x. So tech is, is, is growing at twice, was growing at twice the rate of of GDP. So the first thing we start looking at is the is the GDP growth rate going forward. And we have put together a number of scenarios. We've got a, you know, sort of an optimistic scenario, a sort of uh, a probable scenario, and kind of a pessimistic scenario. And in those scenarios, we think in the optimistic scenario, GDP goes from just under 3% to about 2.5%. In the pessimistic, in the probable scenario, it goes to about 2%. And in the pessimistic scenario, it goes to about 1.4%. That's global GDP. And then, of course, we, would, we look at all the different components that are related and, and, and tied to GDP, as well as component availability, as well as overall demand, as well as what verticals will be impacted. We believe that from a, from a, a, a probable standpoint. And from a, from a probable standpoint, we're talking about that China starts to come back online, uh, you know, in the springtime sort of time frame, full capacity, but really faces headwinds all the way into uh, the, the middle of the year, going into the second half of the year. And the, prob and, and, and the probable scenario says that the virus spreads around the world, which is exactly what's happened. So we're out of the optimistic scenario. We're now into the probable scenario. We think that it really comes down to how much it spreads into other regions of the world, which is kind of taking us we think somewhere between the probable scenario and the pessimistic um, scenario. That takes IT demand from where we thought it would be at the beginning of this year at 5% down to somewhere between 3 and 1% growth. We could, in a very, very negative scenario, get to 0% growth, but we don't think that will be the case. We expect we'll probably be somewhere between those. Let's call it 2, 2.5, two maybe 3% growth. Ouch. Paul? Yeah. Uh, cr Crawford, I'm wondering, to what degree in all of this uh, are cloud services insulated? Yeah, so great question. So um, when you look at the overall services market, particularly the cloud service providers, um, those tend to feel the impact a lot later. Um, it's sort of that as a service uh, business. Um, we think that the biggest, so, so the, the direct answer to your question is not nearly as much as the people that are making the tangible goods. The people that are making, it's, it's just a lot easier to say, um, you know what, uh, I'll put off my PC buying, I'll put off my mobile phone buying, I'll put off even my infrastructure buying. But the actual people that are selling at the top of the stack as a service applications or cloud services, those folks, um, again, in this marvelous time uh, where technology is, you know, eating the world, companies, if they're going to be in business, they're using a cloud service provider. And, and and that means that they're likely not to back away as much from those cloud service providers. I just want to circle back to that point you were making before about components and screens in particular. Been a couple of nasty shocks to the supply chain now in the past couple of years. First the trade war, now this. 
I'm wondering if the lesson here is, well, maybe warehousing, not such a bad thing. Yeah, it's a great point. I, I would also throw, you know, while we're talking about sort of global disasters, uh, the, um, the, uh, the, 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 the tsunami um, that we saw where, where that was a, a significant problem. And, and we definitely saw that there were a lot of components we weren't able to get. Uh, particularly, we had disk drive factories flooded in Thailand in that period of time. And I, I, I think that there are sort of two lessons here. One is that there's probably a little bit more slack in the supply chain than we thought. Um, and I think that that's one of the reasons why we're not seeing component availability yet. Uh, that is that is super super tight and I think you'll slowly start to see that this whole thing is going to kind of be just a situation where everything feels tight I don't think it's going to be like a door closing uh, secondly I think that um, over time um, we'll definitely see more mitigation to lo other low-cost manufacturing uh, sites around the world. And I think places like uh, uh, Vietnam, like Thailand, are going to get another look in terms of places to manufacture to mitigate some of this risk of any one country Crawford, very quickly, we only got a few seconds left, but I'm wondering if there's any lessons here from previous outbreaks like SARS. Yeah, um, you know, I think that uh, from, a, from, from, from a lesson standpoint, it's, it's that, you know, maybe it's not just all about cost, but it's about mitigation and fi figuring out how to mitigate that, 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 that manufacturing base that we have in order to be able to flexibly manufacture in different places around the world. Um, this is going to be hard. There's going to be some bumps in the road, but we will get through it. And we do believe we will see reduced, but we will see IT demand this year.